Some people feel that Samsung's budget A-series devices are kind of pricey, especially when you look at their specs on paper. But with the A05, it almost seems like Samsung's listening, because they made some really good choices, but they still also made some not so great choices. This is a bit of a nitpick, but this phone is huge, like S23 Ultra huge. I don't know why they made it bigger, but they made it bigger. And that could be a good thing, cause you know, more screen real estate for watching videos or playing games, but it also makes using this phone one-handed much, much harder. You would also notice that we have a regular power button on the A05, meaning that we still don't get a fingerprint sensor. And although I sort of understand why they didn't add a fingerprint sensor here, I still feel that a phone that costs over $100 should come with one. But I should add that it does come with face unlock. And then lastly, removing the charging adapter from the box still isn't cool. Especially when you do that on a budget phone. With all that said, I still feel that the A05 is a pretty good phone. Even though I sort of complained about the size of the phone, I actually love how it looks, especially in this green color. It has two cameras on the back with the flash sort of in the middle and has this glossy patterned finish. Surprisingly, it doesn't show that many fingerprint marks, just smudges. The back and frame are made of plastic, which is great for surviving drops, but are not so great for scratches. So you have to be careful or just wear a case. Samsung upgraded to a U-shaped notch on the A05, which is nice, or at least nicer than the V-shaped notch on its predecessor. But besides the difference in the notch and screen size, the display remained the same. It's a 720p 60Hz LCD display. It's fine. It would have been nice if this came with a 90Hz display, but I don't know if regular people care as much about a higher refresh rate as we do. But hey, Samsung, if you're watching, it would be nice to have a smoother display. The number one reason why I said the A05 feels like a much better phone is because of the processor they went with. It's the Helio G85. Even though this is a pretty old processor, for this $100-ish price point, it's actually pretty good. The Redmi 13C I reviewed like a month ago came with the G85. The Spock 20 from a couple weeks ago also came with the G85. So Samsung going with the same processor as the others feels like a good choice, and also an upgrade from the Helio P35 of the A04. In this region though, Samsung is only giving us 4GB of RAM. I believe some regions get 6GB. You would get reasonable performance out of the A05. A much better performance in fact when compared to the A04. The phone would feel smoother, apps would open faster, gaming would even be better. Basically, you would have a better experience carrying out all your basic phone tasks on the A05. But if you're in that bracket of people running multiple apps, multiple heavy apps, then this might start to slow down. If it had more RAM, like six or eight, it should handle heavy multitasking better. But in this region, we only get four. Which is fine, cause most people buying this phone aren't in the heavy user bracket. This comes with the same set of cameras as the A04, a 50 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel depth sensor. Just like most budget phones, under the right lighting conditions, the main camera does pretty well. The colors pop and they pop even more when you're taking pictures of the sky and of plants. Honestly, these are arguably the best cameras for this price. It'll be interesting to compare these with the Redmi 13C though. It has an 8 megapixel selfie camera, and even though it's technically an upgrade from the A04, the photos still aren't going to blow your mind. Under direct sunlight, I noticed that it has this reddish hue to it sometimes, but yeah, not anything spectacular. And I'd say that's the same with video. It won't blow your mind. The front facing camera shoots in 1080p, doesn't have the best quality and has no stabilization. The rear facing camera also shoots max in 1080p. We get average video quality, 
but weirdly it kind of looks like it has some sort of stabilization even though on the spec sheet it doesn't it's not the best stabilization but it seems to have a little bit of stabilization so overall the cameras are fine but it definitely takes better pictures than videos battery life is very good it's almost expected at this price point you can go days without charging with light use and then on heavy days it should last you enough till you get home to charge definitely a plus battery life one cool thing about the a05 is its 25 watt fast charging capabilities which for its price point is pretty impressive but if you recall early in the video i mentioned that it doesn't come with a charger in the box so to get that 25 watt charging speed you need to buy a separate charger okay so that's the a05 a much improved phone from the a04 especially with the addition of the helio g85 processor also i believe samsung is promising four years of software updates which is going to take this from android 13 all the way to android 17. we also can't forget that impressive main camera but it still lacks a fingerprint sensor comes with a 60 hz display and the charger is sold separately the a05 starts at 95,500 and goes up to 115. what do you guys think of samsung's new budget phone do you think that samsung's perhaps listening now um just drop a comment down below you know i'll be down there chatting with you guys but for now that's it that's my review of the galaxy a05 Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you when you see me.